Musicians, today I'm gonna to share with you why making videos is essential for any self-employed musician, why your business will suffer without making videos, how you will improve at doing music by making videos, and what has worked specifically for me on my road to getting 1 million views on my YouTube channel. At the end of this video, I'm gonna give away something really cool. This video is a part of a series of content that I give away related to my program called Music Biz Mastermind, in which I help self-employed musicians attract more projects, gigs, clients, and or students. So first, why making videos is important for you to get better as a musician at what you do. The single best way that I know to get better as a musician, as a performer, as a composer, a teacher, or even presenting any kind of content is by recording myself and listening back. The reason for this is that when we're actually performing, listening or watching later gives us feedback that we can't receive in the moment while we're actually performing something. So while I get that many people, including myself, are uncomfortable with watching themselves on camera later, by refusing or denying yourself the opportunity to observe your performances later on, you're denying yourself the opportunity to notice things that you could easily change and improve. Let me give you an example. When I gave my junior recital in college at Ohio State University, I worked for three months beforehand and I prepared a lot of really difficult repertoire. It was an hour long recital. I thought it went great. I had worked for months on it. And afterwards, my teacher said, take this cassette tape and go listen to it. But what I noticed shocked me, and it was that I had played basically the entire recital a quarter tone flat. The only way that could be possible is that I just wasn't aware of the fact that I was playing flat all the time. Once I noticed it, I was able to address it and fix it and change my perception. So the point is that when you record yourself, whether it's through audio or video, it's one of the best ways that you can get better at what you do. So now, why your career will suffer if you don't have videos. In short, you're gonna lose out on opportunities because people will not hire you when they can't learn more about the thing you do or who you are via video. Whether someone's looking to get a vibe about you, your personality and how you come across, or they're looking to vet a specific skill or service you offer, most people wanna be able to look you up on video even after they've been referred to you. So I'm gonna give you three different examples of occasions recently where I've seen people who have been passed up on opportunities because they didn't have video. First, I was on tour and I needed a hired drummer. So for one drummer that had been highly recommended to me, I was able to find two YouTube videos that they were a part of as a side person in someone else's project. And in those two videos, they were playing straight ahead jazz. It was basically informed by swing playing. And I thought they sounded great playing swing, but I wanted to make sure that they could play backbeat. Uh, which I was also gonna perform on my show. And I went to look around, I couldn't find any other videos that showed them doing other anything other than swinging. So I passed by this person. Here's another example. Recently, an international student of mine asked me for a recommendation to three graduate programs in the United States where they could go study jazz. I gave them three names of people at different university programs who are either the chairperson or you know high up in a department, people that I trust. So that person got back to me and they said that they had gone to two people and sent them a note, but because the other person didn't have any videos that they could find, they just passed them over. As a final example, when I moved to Asheville, North Carolina a couple years ago, I was looking for a violin teacher for my youngest child. And even though I am a violin teacher and I know tons of violin teachers all over the world, um, one of the things I wanted to do was look on YouTube. So there were definitely teachers who got passed over by me because they weren't on YouTube. I can tell you for sure that as a parent, I would almost never hire a teacher for my children unless I had a chance to get to know more about them, preferably via video. I could give countless more examples, but suffice it to say that if people can't find you on YouTube, they are passing you over, even if you're getting referred to them by people that they trust. Not only that, but you're also missing out on the opportunity to be discovered by people who are searching for you in a certain location, such as saxophonist in Boise, Idaho, or piano teacher in Iowa City. 
So briefly, I want to share some of the things that you can show on video and that you should show on video and why. Number one, showing who you are. Speaking from the heart, showing your human side, something that reveals you as a human being. Why? Because people work with whomever they know, like, and trust. Examples of showing who you are could include speaking engagements, informal talks to the camera like I'm doing right now, uh, live segments showing you teaching, consulting, or presenting workshops, moments of you hanging out with your family, conversations on any subject, work-related or not, between you and people you interview about anything. Number two, you want to demonstrate specific skills and or services with your videos. Describe the benefits whenever you can to your customers of the services you provide by talking about them on the camera or listing them on screen. Demonstrate your skills or services in as many subcategories and as specifically as possible. If you're a performer, you can perform solo, you can perform duo, you can perform one style, you can perform another style. Make sure to showcase all the different styles and settings that you play in. If you're a teacher, you can teach a private lesson and get parts of that on film. You can teach a workshop. You can talk about your teaching philosophy. You can talk about your teaching policies. Talk about why you like to teach. Talk to parents, talk to students, teach lessons to the camera. And here's one of my favorite tips because I've done a lot of teaching videos. I would simply make a list of all the things that you say a lot to your students and just teach those things to the camera. Each lesson could be between one and five minutes long, roughly, or longer if you want. If it's a 10 minute lesson, you might break it into three, three parts, for example. Other things you can share include behind the scenes footage, or also known as a day in the life of your tour, your project, your recording session. You can do interviews with other people you collaborate with or colleagues. Um, and you can also have other people create video testimonials about you and post them. So I can understand why a lot of us are just afraid to start shooting video, and we've already talked about that a little bit. And so here's what I recommend for you to get started. First of all, just make a list of five to 10 subjects or types of videos that you wanna make based on what I've already talked about here. And then second of all, get your phone and find a blank setting somewhere, get a little bit of light and shoot your first video. And if you go ahead and start and just record those one or two first videos, then what I would do is if you're not sure about them, share them with somebody that you're really close with that you trust, who will give you honest and constructive feedback on them before you share them publicly. Once you get started and get over the hump of making those first couple videos, it'll get so much easier from then. And you don't have to worry about production values in the beginning, but as you go on, you can improve them. And next I wanna just talk about the three most important aspects of production values in order of importance. So first of all, for me, the most important thing is to have decent lighting and a good backdrop. And I'm just lumping it all together. So for a good backdrop, you can have like a neutral backdrop like I have right here, or you can try to find an interesting backdrop. Since I don't trust myself to, to know what's the difference between an interesting and a cluttered backdrop, I just prefer to go neutral. And for lighting, you can use the sunlight, you can go outside, or you can get some cheap, uh, lights uh, off of Amazon, um, or you can just do your best with the, the lighting that you have at your house. The second most important thing to me is audio. You wanna record a separate audio track or make sure somehow that you get really good audio to go with your video. And the third thing, which I'm not even using in this video, would be if you wanted to use multi-cameras. Once you get deeper into making videos, I highly recommend that you create your videos in batches. So for example, you might set aside um, one hour to teach five different short lessons. As far as the choice between whether or not to do everything yourself or to delegate aspects of making videos, I recommend that you start making your first videos by yourself with a phone and just do the best you can. And then once you feel comfortable having made one or two videos, you start to seek someone that can help you with editing and or shooting. And I think you'll be surprised, pleasantly surprised, to find that there are a lot of people, especially a lot of young people out there that are good with video and will be able to do it in a reasonable, reasonably priced way because they wanna develop a relationship with you and they wanna get experience themselves as well. Either way, my friendly challenge to you is that you start making some videos for yourself this week. I've already told you how to do it and why to do it. So I hope you'll get started this week. And just while I'm at it, I'm gonna ask you if you think that this will be helpful for anybody else you know, please share this video and also like and comment on it and subscribe to my channel for more great content like this. 
Okay, so now what's worked for me on my road to 1 million views on YouTube? And it's probably not what you think. Look, I'm a jazz violinist. What I do is not necessarily gonna make me a viral sensation. The strategy that has worked for me though to increase my business and to build my brand and build relationships with people that I love working with, give me more projects, clients, students, has been to make lots of videos. Some of them are good, some of them aren't so good. Some of them that I think are gonna be great, people don't like, some of them that I don't like, everybody loves. But my strategy is to make lots of videos. Different types, different reasons, different settings, some of the moments, some planned and produced. When I first started making videos, the production values were absolutely awful, but a lot of times people didn't care. And some of my earliest videos are actually the highest converting or the most popular still to this day, even though they were shot in the wrong angles and with bad lighting, but people don't really always care about that. They want to, they care about the content. They care about the authenticity. I'm sometimes surprised by which videos other people actually like. So I've stopped second guessing myself and I just put stuff out there. Of course I do things like sharing my videos with everybody I know on my email list and social media platforms. And also there are some tools that I use and I encourage you to check those out in the description below this video. Okay, so now it's time for a really big disclaimer. As of the moment of this shooting this video, I have not yet reached 1 million views on my YouTube channel. Although I actually have reached more than 1 million views when you consider other channels on YouTube and Facebook native. But part of the reason that I'm making this video and others in this series is that I've set a goal for myself to reach 1 million views on my YouTube channel. So I just wanna make sure that I ask you one more time to please go ahead and share, like, comment, and or subscribe to my channel if you'd like to help me in reaching my goal. And in the meantime, it's not just about getting those million views. It helps me create more opportunities by developing more meaningful connections with people. And I get to share and improve my own creative work as a musician and as a speaker or teacher this way. Now I get that social media and sharing content isn't for everybody. There are a lot of people that feel that they wanna keep things private. And so they don't even like the idea of social media. My wife isn't even on Facebook. I totally respect that. But this is the distinction in my mind and why I approach it the way I do. See, I'm a self-employed musician. So I look at social media as a way to build my brand and create opportunities. If I worked for another company, I wouldn't feel the same importance to have to share so many things about myself. But I am my brand and people are gonna work with me based on whether they know, like, or trust me. So to me, this is all about business. And business is what helps me to essentially live the dream that I have as a musician. So by doing business, by getting more opportunities for people to connect with you, to hire you, getting more gigs, projects, students, that's what's gonna help you to reinvest into your music and whatever sort of lifestyle that you wanna have. If you've watched this far in my video, or if you've seen any of my other videos, chances are that you have a better sense of who I am now and you're more likely to want to learn about my music business consulting services. You might want to sign up for my free course, get on the phone to talk with me about your career, or even join my mastermind group. The point for me is not actually whether or not millions of people watch my videos, but rather just that you're watching my video and that this gives me a chance to provide value to you upfront and develop a basis of trust. I wanna double down on this point because chances are part of the reason you don't make videos currently is because you're worried about how embarrassed you'll feel when your YouTube channel shows a view count of four people who watch your video. But that's the point. It's not about how many people watch your videos. It's about having the ability to show the right people when the time is right, what they need to know about you and or your services. Okay, so we've made it to the end of this video and I told you that I was gonna give away something cool. First, I'd really appreciate it if you would subscribe to my YouTube channel. Just look for the little icon of me on this video. Thanks so much for watching. Until next time. This is Christian Howes with Creative Strings. Click the link to subscribe and watch more.